The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases around the world has soared past 100,000. Governments are scrambling to respond to this unprecedented threat to public health, while researchers are working to develop a vaccine. But how close are they to success? Today, we are going to speak with Dr. Paul McKay, a senior research fellow at the Department of Infectious Diseases at Imperial College London. Dr. McKay and his fellow researchers have been working to develop an effective vaccine for the novel coronavirus, coming up with a candidate vaccine within just 14 days of getting the sequence from China. Thank you for joining us today, all the way from London. Pleasure. Well, Dr. McKay, your lab has responded to this coronavirus outbreak very quickly, actually becoming the world's first outside China to start testing on animals. How were you able to get started so quickly? Well, because of the um, availability of the sequence, um, we were then able to design a recombinant stretch of um, DNA which we could then quickly put into our vaccine platform. So our vaccine platform is uh, uh, very easily changed by putting in a new sequence. And um, we particularly use a, something called a self-amplifying RNA. And to do that, we created the strings of DNA, which are the same as the sequence that are present in the virus, on the outside of the virus, the coronavirus. And we put that into the vector and expressed an RNA molecule. And RNA molecule is simply the message which is uh, used by all of our cells to produce protein. So we can very quickly use that RNA molecule to produce protein in human cells. So, um, or in animal cells, which is the case of what we've done so far. So we created this vaccine using our platform and injected it into animals. Right. And we were able to, sorry. Oh, sorry, do you go ahead? So we were able to see a, a very good uh, immune response already to that vaccine that we injected into the mice um, two weeks ago, almost three weeks ago now. Right, so you already had this platform that was um, very adaptable to this new sequence. Yes. Great. Well, um, how exactly would your coronavirus vaccine work once it's developed for human beings? So, um, whenever we have made the actual vaccine and tested it in animals, we then take account of how well it works in animals, what the antibody response is and what the cellular response is, the T cells, the white blood cells that, that will react against the, the virus and, and stop it from continuing the infection. Mm -hmm. And we would then need to go into early human clinical trials. So the first human clinical trial is um, essential in that it's to see whether the vaccine that we have developed is actually safe and can be used in people without causing a, a severe ill effects. We know that that is likely to not be the case. We know that this is quite a uh, a vaccine that, that in animals is very well tolerated. So there's no reason at all that in people that it wouldn't also be very well tolerated. And how does it work exactly once the vaccine enters so, the system? So we usually would give it in an intramuscular injection, which is a very similar injection that you get for nearly every vaccine. Uh, there's a few vaccines that are given by different routes, like um, the flu mist is given up the nose. Um, but most vaccines are given in a simple uh, intramuscular injection into the arm. Um, and this would be exactly the same. Uh, the formulation that we make that would contain our RNA vaccine uh, would then go into the cells and start making bits of the coronavirus protein. So it would not, would not make the whole coronavirus. Um, we obviously wouldn't want to do that but it would make a very small part of the coronavirus from the outside of the uh, virus itself. And that protein, uh, once it's expressed in the muscle cells, it's seen as being uh, foreign, as being different to what was there before. And so the body then starts to mount uh, a response against that difference. Uh, it first would make 
uh, T-cell response and an antibody response. And it's hoped that either one or a combination of both of those would uh, stop the um, coronavirus from being able to infect a person that had been vaccinated. Right, so what you're doing is replicating a small part of the virus. Well, in mid-February, yes. you used your vaccine in mice. So what have you observed so far? So we have observed, um, uh, because the mice are still, the experiment's ongoing, uh, we've observed the antibody responses actually in, in this, their sera, um, in their bloodstream, we can detect uh, specific antibodies against the COVID-19 virus. Okay, and what would you say are some unique characteristics of COVID-19 that you had when, uh, that you had to actually consider when developing your vaccine? Um, well, so because of the way our platform works, it, it doesn't, the uniqueness of the virus isn't particularly important to us. Um, we can put in all sorts of different um, uh, sequences from, say, Ebola or, or Lassa or, or Zika virus. Um, and so COVID was just a, another uh, stretch of genetic information that we were able to put into our platform and quickly make a vaccine. So that's the, the, the great thing about our platform is the speed at which we can do that. Um, there was, there's nothing particularly strange or unusual about coronaviruses. In fact, there, there are coronaviruses that are naturally present in people all the time, but it just gives you a slight cold. Um, it travels through the human populations um, all the time. There's, there's several strains, not this one, because this is new. And usually when things come into the human population from an animal population, a zoonotic transfer, there's usually some kind of settling down period um, where the coronavirus is then adapting to being present in people. And because this is a new one, that's why it looks different to the existing ones that, that we have um, all the time. Now, this is different from SARS, the original SARS, or from MERS, because they were also, at the time, new coronaviruses that come into people. Mm -hmm. And we know that they were very much more deadly than this one, especially MERS. Um, but of course, because they were so much more deadly, it stopped them spreading so widely. Whereas this one is got a long incubation period and it can spread for a long time in people before they even notice that they, they are feeling ill. Then, so there's nothing, sorry. Sorry, um, then sorry. what would you say is the biggest challenge to developing this, uh, this vaccine for the novel coronavirus? So I think that the challenge really is um, trying to do it as quickly as possible so that we can have it and be effective um, in the shortest time as possible. Now that challenge is not just a scientific challenge um, in that we've already made a vaccine, but now we have to test it. Of course, you have to test a vaccine. And it's those testing which necessarily take time. You can't immediately release it for use in people. You have to test and make sure that what you're saying that you've made is actually doing what you're saying it's going to do and that it's effective. I mean, that's the most important thing is that it's effective. Um, so that that's the thing that takes time and anything that can speed up that process would be uh, addressing the challenge of this virus. Right, and there are various efforts around the world to uh, develop this effective vaccine. Some are even calling it a race. So in what ways is it competitive and um, what are you doing differently, I suppose, from your competitors? So um, I, I don't like the term race for um, uh, developing a vaccine that's going to be used in, um, to save people from disease or, or from um, dying. I think it's a, a healthy competition, but there is a huge amount of collaboration that already goes on between scientists. And um, as far as I can uh, have noticed with this particular effort for the COVID-19 um, coronavirus, people are being even more collaborative than they have been previously. So for example, we're working with a number of different teams um, across uh, in, in Paris, in, in the UK and in the United States. And we are um, 
giving, uh, sending our RNA, they're formulating it, they're sending it back. You know, there's a lot of collaboration. Um, right. Other people, sorry, other people who are making different vaccines, of course, have their own collaborative networks and they um, are, are, everybody's collaborating. It's, it's not a race, it's like a, a, a collaborative race. Right. Well, we're running out of time a bit, so we will have to keep it a, on the brief side. But there are worries Sorry. that uh, COVID-19 will mutate. Uh, then what can be done to ensure that the vaccine continues to work? So um, this is a story that, that was there was two different strains that were circulating, but we're not really sure that it's actually mutating very quickly. Um, it's not like uh, other viruses like influenza mutates very quickly. Um, so COVID-19 does not seem to be doing that. So it looks as though it would not escape um, very easily. Right. And just before we go, um, just before we go, some believe it could take years to develop an effective vaccine, as it normally involves a very lengthy, drawn out process, along with very strict regulatory standards you have to meet. But how are you planning to achieve that by the end of the year? So we're planning to just um, as best as we can, we're trying to force it through as quickly as possible. So the reason why a lot of these things take this length of time is that there is all of those regulatory hurdles to overcome. Um, but we're very practiced in doing that now. And we would be able, I, I believe, to um, start a human clinical trial in June and then get results from that by uh, late summer and then we would need to start an efficacy trial. And that's the big one. Um, the first one is the safety trial and the second one is an eff efficacy trial. And that would tell us whether it's actually going to do anything against this coronavirus or not. Right, so it's really more about getting through the hurdles, the regulatory yes. hurdles really. Well, that's all we have time for today. Dr. McKay, we wish you and your team the best of luck in developing a COVID-19 vaccine and hope we can see it before the end of the year. Now. Dr. Paul McKay, Senior much. Research Fellow at Imperial College London, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, this is also where we wrap up our show. Thank you for joining us to our viewers around the world. Global Insight will be back at the same time tomorrow with more views from experts on issues making headlines. Have a lovely day or evening wherever you are. Goodbye. <laughs>